make it pop. It rev matches. <laughs> Hello everybody, what's happening, what's happening? My name's Neil, welcome along to Midlife Motors. And yes, the title is correct. This car is now eight years old. Longest I've ever owned a car, to be honest with you. And I thought today, as is the YouTube way, let's go and find five things we like and five things we dislike after having had the car for a fair period of time now. Now, that bit I got wrong. I struggled to get five things, but I got there that I didn't dislike. The five things I do like, I think it's near a 10. We're going to do this on the way to a station, to a railway station called Weems Bay. It's quite famous, quite, I wouldn't say popular is the right word, but it's just won this year in 2023, British Station of the Year. Oof. And it's, um, it's architects quite well known up in Scotland here, James Miller. He was uh, an architect back in the, you know, 1900s did quite a lot of commercial stuff but did a lot of railway buildings and this one's quite cool i'm not into trains so don't panic but i am an engineer so i do like a building one of the things i love is dropping it down a few gears we're in second the sheer acceleration in this car even in today's And it auto blipping coming down the gearbox. You've got to love that. You never tire that. I've got goosebumps. You never tire of that. Leads me on to the second thing. The speed of this car, even like I say in today's day and age, is massive. But the brakes, they fitted this car with superb brakes. They're very strong, very easy to modulate, great pedal, no wear in the eight years, still on the original discs and pads just brilliant absolutely brilliant and because let's put it in manual mode there's nothing in front of us we'll go from third this time because second gear spun up the wheels <laughs> and that blip that noise when it changes gear mega okay calm down so the gearbox i like the gearbox now the gearbox is also in my disc lights and we'll do that at the end of the video we'll run through the disc lights at the end of the video but one of the reasons i like the gearbox is because it is quite old-fashioned it's a single clutch a torque converter which means when you're going around town there's none of that double clutch you know all these pdk dsgs that are meant to be the greatest thing since sliced bread yeah they're great when they're on it but when you're just trying to poodle around they're hesitant they're jerky they're well they're just kind of rubbish this smooth when you're going around town i'm just coming uh coming along to try and pull over now it'll flick into reverse quickly so the gearbox for everyday use it gets a thumbs up I do like the fact that although it's a convertible, it's a hard roof. There's just something about a soft top that is a soft top that just doesn't work for me. It never feels with the roof up, which is, I'll be honest, a lot of the time, it never feels anything other than you've got the roof down. You don't have the soundproofing, you don't have the, the quietness, you don't have the security. Yes, I like that. Whilst we're just driving along here pretty sedately, nice uh, nice view, the roads are a bit, just had a massive downpour, I'm being careful. I suppose a sensible reason why I like this car, and it's financial really, I mean, when I bought this car, it was the end of production run, so I got a massive discount on it. Um, I mean, I paid less for this car than a, a mega hot hatch would cost you these days. And it's been cheap to run, it has, this car's, uh, it's a bit of an indulgence for me, so if it was, costing arms and legs to run to maintain then it would have to go and it just hasn't i mean it's got such a low co2 because we're in four cylinders just now because of the deactivation it means it keeps the road tax down i think it's less than 300 pounds still it gets reasonable miles per gallon it's not expensive to service and value wise in terms of depreciation it seems to have it seems to have hit a level where it's just where it's just staying so i kind of the future values of this car are kind of 
I wouldn't say guaranteed, but known. So yeah, financially, this car doesn't hurt. Wagons and everything in today's video. We're driving in traffic, we're going through the town center and it's an easy car to drive. It's dropped down into four cylinders. Steering's nice and light. I'm in comfort mode, so it's riding along quite smoothly. Mrs. Midlife Motors will quite happily jump in this car and drive it just as an car. So I think you could use one of these every day, no problem. I don't, it's a special car for me, but that's just the way I am. Yeah, another like. It does handle quite well. It's got quite numb steering at the sort of straight on. But as the steering loads up, the feedback gets better. That's good. I do also like the looks of this car. And when we get out, we'll maybe have a quick look around the outside. But I mean, from a sort of a discreet point of view, it's got a lot of performance. It packs a lot of punch. But it doesn't scream and shout about it the people that know give you a nod the ones that don't know you can just carry on and glide by and in my advancing years as i've said before i kind of like a car like that i don't want big spoilers and big alloys and it will be quiet when you want it to be quiet well, it's even doing stop start just now it's got a really sharp front end it must have quite a quick steering rack and it turns in you'll always put the nose in this car where you want it you'll maybe have to mess around and catch the rear but that's okay i prefer that to a car that's going to wash wide another big plus for me anyway my driving style suits we talked about value before and money and costs and i think we have to go over that again because it is something that always whenever i think about changing this car i think but how much am i going to have to spend to get this performance all this kit and it's got everything in this car and and just be a little bit more modern it's it's not a few thousands of pounds it's 10 20 30 40 50 thousand pounds to get to get a cayman or a boxster with this level of performance and the list level of equipment in today's money it's going to be it's going to be eighty thousand pounds which is just well it's mad it's always quite nice to have a destination when you're going out for a drive and today's no different we've arrived in weems bay over this shoulder you'll probably just be able to make out the station and we'll go and have a look at that and over the other shoulder there's the ferry just come in and about to load up to go over to the island of i think that's the island of butte so that'll be rothsey over there somewhere i've not explored that one yet i'm looking forward to doing that some lovely uh, flowers to see as you come in and panning around here you can more or less straight away see the uh, the architecture that James Miller liked to adopt this sort of curved lattice structure with the with the glass. If you go straight on down that way, that takes you to the ferry that we saw earlier over in the on the wall there. You can see the plaque that they're they're proudly displaying and whizzing round here. It shows you the, the sort of curvature that that takes that um, the train lines follow. Quite, quite a famous architect, Miller. He, he, he lived for, he was born in 1860. I think he designed this about 1900 went on for 87 years so he had a he had a long life in fact if you're watching this from from london somewhere i think he designed the institute of civil engineers heading back now that was a good pit stop and i guess with this beautiful view beside us we better go through the negatives now the main negative i'm going to cover in this car is one that not a lot of people th say but having lived with it it's the weight this car weighs 1600 kilograms which compared with a boxer of the same era or a 981 with a with a pdk gearbox is about 250 kilos more so you can imagine that makes a difference and it does the car masks it's masks the weight well it uses power sledgehammer kind of approach but the other thing you notice about the weight is that it moves about now a lot of that extra weight will be because of this roof if you want to push on in the car leave the roof up because when you put it down the weight goes to a different and you feel it you feel the difference with the weight in the in, in in the boot now if you're treating it as a hot rod that's fine because you get loads of traction but if you're trying to go around corners you start getting a bit of a pendulum effect and uh, when you're braking ideally you want the nose over the uh, the weight over the nose so that's something i think until you live with a car you just you're never going to find out so that's number one that's the top of my list of things that i don't like about this car The second one, the gearbox. Now, we said that was a good thing, and it is when you're around town, very smooth. When you're out on the road, it does 
a twin clutch system would be better there's no denying that it does make the involvement a little bit more because you need to predict you need to watch your revs and predict when you need to shift because you know it's going to be a bit slow in an ideal world yeah that would be better The next one is more to do with this actual car. This car doesn't have the performance pack in it, so it doesn't have a limited slip diff. I really wish I could have spec this car. This was stock, very light, late car. I think this was the sixth last um, one of these available, and the other five were black, and I didn't want a black car. ride we need to come on to ride now i'm in comfort mode i'm not on the greatest road ever but it's by no means badly scarred and the ride even in comfort mode is pretty firm i won't lie to you it i think that is the weight reacting to the to the to the uh the undulations as well so you're getting a double whammy there a long journey the interior the seats lovely and comfy but the ride can get a little bit tiresome That's us come to the end then, that's eight years done and that's the review completed, the things that I like and I know. Hope you've enjoyed it, if you have please give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe below. Will I still have this car in eight years time? Who knows, I think so, I think probably, I mean the way cars are going just now I'm not all that fussed but that's a whole new, that's a whole new conversation. Thanks very much for watching this one, I shall say goodbye with one final third gear pull woohoo